I think I'll uh, I'll really lean into this. All right. This prompt actually comes to us from a psychic reading that was done on a viewer. Um, you know, I just wish the best for them in what they wished for with their future. You know, they're definitely dealing with some heavy stuff, so now's the time for just to let somebody else kind of take the reins for a moment. Really listen to what they have to say about maybe the world or maybe another world. Let's find out together. This story loops on itself after a thousand words. By the time I was done, I'd imagined a TV show adaptation a hundred times. But it will not write itself. So I post it here. Hope somebody gets some inspiration from it. Veronique has been marked for greatness by her parents for as long as she can remember. She was born a gift, a princess whose worth had always exceeded the norm. But on a chilly February morning, that wealthy future had been firmly quashed, at least for now. No doctor had precisely explained whether she should survive the consequences of a decision that left an entire family feeling as if she'd forgotten their worth. That's what you get for going against mom's wishes, you little shit. She's not my mom, I mumbled. Oh, he said and rubbed the side of his head. Well then, that's different. She's not anybody's mom, I muttered. She is, he said, and shoved me. I stumbled back against the wall. She's not, because she doesn't exist. Oh, he said again, that's different too. There's nothing different about it. Yeah, there is, he said. You just don't understand. Fine, I said. Explain it to me. Okay. He looked around, then bent down and picked up a well-worn marble. Imagine that you and all your friends were sitting around a table, and imagine that all of you had marbles, and I was taking them all the way. You wouldn't be very happy, would you? I thought about it. No. You wouldn't. Well then, that's because you can't take them away. They're yours. He broke off a piece of his graham cracker and held it out to me. So since your mom can't take away your marbles, she doesn't exist. I stared at him, thinking about that. It was an interesting idea. It makes sense, doesn't it? He ate the piece of graham cracker. It makes so much sense, he repeated. Yeah, I said, and thought about it some more. It did make sense. Mom was like that too sometimes. So, he said, does that mean that mom doesn't exist? I looked up at him. No, I said, mom does exist. She's just not around. Oh, he said, well, that makes sense too. I looked at him, then shrugged. Yeah, I said, I guess it does. So, he said, your mom exists or not? And that's that. Yeah, I said. I guess it is. Yeah, he said. So when do we go? I don't know, I said. Well, he said, and brushed crumbs off his lap. We should go soon, don't you think? Why? Because, he said, I don't want to stay here much longer. Why not? Because, he said, because this place is full of darkness, and I don't like dark. I smiled. You don't like dark either, I said. You told me lots of times. He frowned. I don't like it, he said, and stood up. I have to go now. I'll see you later. Okay, I said. See you later. Later, he said, and walked away. I watched him go. He was strange. And now, he was strange in a new way. I didn't know what to make of it. I sat there for a while, thinking about that strange new way, and then I thought about the marble. I thought about what he'd said. I stood up and walked over to the table. I picked up one of the marbles and looked at it. It was old. The paint was chipped off. Some of its pieces were chipped off too. I don't like dark, I murmured, and looked back at Michael. His eyes were closed. He seemed to be asleep. I looked down at the marble in my hand. I don't like dark, I said again, 
and then I picked it up and threw it at him. He opened his eyes. What? he said. I don't like dark, I said. He frowned. What? he said again. I don't like dark, I said again. And then the marble hit him. He leapt to his feet and turned around. What? he said again. I started to laugh. I couldn't help it. I don't like dark, I said. I don't like dark, and I don't like you. What? he said again. I don't like dark, I said again. He glared at me. What? he demanded. I don't like dark, I said again. You said you like dark, he snarled. I don't like dark, I said. Right, he shouted. I said I like dark. I was lying. I hate dark. I hate dark. Okay, I said. You hate it. Good for you. But I still hate you. And I try to find other people who love you. And I never, ever want you to be happy again. You do? He was shocked. You think I'm happy? And looked down. I don't think you're happy. I don't think you've ever been happy. Not for real. Not deep down and in your soul. Not the way I'm talking about. Not the way you're talking about. Gee, he murmured. I really blew it, didn't I? I cocked my head to one side. And did I blow it too by believing in you? Is that why I'm here? No, he said. You didn't blow it. You never could. Neither did you, I said. But the point is, I'm not happy about it. And now, you're both planning to go without me. He looked at me. Yes, he said. We are. And, I said, you aren't going to take me along, are you? No, he said. We aren't. And, I said, you aren't exactly going to tell me where we're going, are you? No, he said. We're not. Anne, I said, you don't actually care about me at all, do you? No, he said. We don't. I sighed. All right then, I said. I get it. I'm no longer your lover. No, he growled. I shook my head. My best friend then? Is that it? No, he almost hissed. No, my best friend. All right, I said. All right, I'm your best friend. Now tell me about the new place. What? The new place. You said we're moving to a new place. I want to hear about it. But, he stammered, it's not, it's not, it's not where. It's not a place. He said slowly. It's a... a person. Her name is Helen. She's going to be my mother. I looked at him in horror. You can't be serious, I whispered. I am, he said. I already met her, and I liked her. Why? Because, he said, she knows me. She knows all about me. She knows my past. What past? My mother, he snarled. My real mother. You mean, I said, you've got another mama that you didn't know? He grinned. No, he said. I mean, I have a mama I was meant to have. The one that I've been looking for. And I cried. I'm not it? He winced. No, he said. No, you're not it. You don't love me? No, he grimaced. I don't love you. <laughs>